Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird. You're listening to my podcast. You can read and listen to this podcast at jonathanbird.substack.com. You can share it with friends from there and you can subscribe for free or you can get a paid subscription to support my writing. This is called The Fantastic World of Ions by Dr. Pyro. I'm in my third week of college chemistry, and the most entertaining thing I've learned is the perfectly reasonable naming system for ions. I offer you here, free of charge, a direct transcription of the last lecture. Please take notes and try not to stab yourself with your pencil. There are many more creative ways to die doing chemistry. If you can be patient, we'll get to those. Professor, I'm a pyro, PhD. We have a straightforward system of naming things in chemistry. For instance, these are named di because di means two, except for this one which we call thio because it's sulfur and ancient Greek roots are sapioerotic, but sometimes we do just call it sulfur, and you will memorize those instances when we do that. Otherwise, we name these combinations by the metal and then the non-metal, except for the enormous number that have no metals, like ammonium, not to be confused with ammonia, and just remember those, monatomic ion end with ide, and then if you add some oxygens, never mind how many, the polyatomic ion ends with ite, and if you add one more oxygen than the original amount, which is a secret amount known only to the priests, then it ends with eight. But don't be fooled by hydroxide and cyanide, which are polyatomic but also mischievous, so just memorize those two cheeky little ions. Now, if we have more oxygens than one more than the original amount that only the priests know, then we've run out of suffixes and there's nothing we can do. We must turn to prefixes like per and sometimes super because everyone loves super things, but if everything can be super, then nothing is, so we only do it rarely. If you have less than the church-mandated amount of oxygens, we may begin with hypo because sometimes you need a little. That's a pun, which is allowed in lecture but not in lab. If the ion contains phosphorus, we begin the name with some form of that word, for example, phosphate. However, once in the golden time, a great prophet saw that one of these phosphorus ions was very flamey. So we begin that one with pyro, which is also what we might call many people who get into chemistry because there are so many flamey things. However, there is only one that we call pyro, thus spake the prophet. Okay, lab equipment. These are all screws except for this one that is 1.5 inches long. That's called the nail because Lavoisier called it a nail, so we cannot change it. We will learn to identify the difference between physical and chemical changes, but name changes require creativity, and creativity requires coffee, which is not allowed in the lab. Don't forget to wear your safety glasses. For your homework, study the straightforward system of naming ions you copied in your notes, then burn your notes and determine whether this is a physical change, a chemical change, or an existential crisis. Finally, memorize all the exceptions, which will be most of them. Please fill out your post-lab questions with a number two pencil, which is made of graphite, which is not a compound and does not have one more than the ordained number of oxygens because, in fact, it has no oxygens and is a mineral composed entirely of carbon. Have a great week. Thanks for listening. Saturday, February 3rd, I will be playing a show at Cafe Veritas in Rochester, New York. Doors open at 7 p.m. Buy your tickets at showclicks, that's S-H-O-W-C-L-I-X dot com slash event slash Jonathan hyphen bird. And you can just click on that link if you go to jonathanbird.substack.com. Any of these links, you can click on them on my Substack page. I'm also leading two tours of Scotland that are selling out quickly. One is a photography tour, July 3rd to the 13th, when we will be traveling to some of the incredible wild landscapes of Scotland to study light, composition, and processing to capture what we've seen and the emotions it inspired in us. Photographers of all levels are welcome and encouraged. The second is a musical tour of Scotland, July 15th, to the 25th, wherein we will listen to some of the greatest musicians Scotland has to offer. Last trip, we were surprised by an unexpected meeting with Fiona Ritchie. There's a schedule, but surprises abound. 
Traceless Tours is a conservation tour company, which means we leave the landscape and the economy better than we found it. Some of your payment will go directly into wildlife conservation efforts. Some locations remain secret even to me until we are there to keep human impact on the landscape minimal. I'm proud to work with Traceless Tours. You can put down your deposit and reserve your seat at tracelesstours.com. And that one is slash photography hyphen tour hyphen with hyphen Jonathan. And the other one is music hyphen tour hyphen Jonathan. Again, just go to jonathanbird.substack.com and you can click on those links on the bottom of the page. I'll take you right there. We still have a few seats left, but I would get them if you want to go. Thanks so much for listening. Everybody have a great week.